Tension lingered in the air between myself, Vavi, and Chot as the three of us made our way to the still, lifelike corpse of my ship. The guards didn't stop us, but I nevertheless saw fit to confer with them given the nature of my prototype and the stresses of yesterday's fiasco. Sir, I nodded to one of the soldiers, evidently surprising them with the direct attention of Earth's ambassador. Contrary to my long disproven initial concerns, though I was technically a prisoner here, I was by no means treated as such by the staff at large. In fact, it seemed that most everyone here viewed me as an authority, a sentiment affirmed by the clearance on my badge, second only to that of the prime minister. As such, the guard immediately ceased conversation with his partner and turned to salute me as a superior. Any problem, uh? The Kaffel hesitated, their opaque visor unavailingly searching within my expression for a proper form of address. Mr. Alien, sir? Shaking my head jovially so as not to bring concern to the other clearly eavesdropping guard, I continued. There's a weapon prototype on my ship we are retrieving for testing. I'll be keeping it boxed until we reach the facility, but I wish to inform you so as to avoid a potential confrontation. Hearing Chot's translation of my words, the guard replied with a compliant nod. His friend, however, was clearly cut from more curious cloth. What kind of weapon is it? He asked, shriveling back in response to Chot's resounding glare. Let's just say the kind that'll change the tides of war. I grinned, offering a polite nod to the pair as they pushed open the hangar doors to allow us through. Nervously stepping into my ship's command center and approaching the fabricator's almost grill-like lid, I turned my back to the machine and faced my companions with pride. Are you both ready to see my design? I asked, baiting out from the both of them the obvious affirmation I sought. Why wouldn't we be? Chot replied his usual cool exterior visibly melting into barely buried glee upon the notion of an alien rifle. Much to my surprise, Vavi's answer was similarly enthusiastic. Come on, let's see it, she chirped with delight. In private, she had confided to me her desire for the war's end and for my technology to be used peacefully. However, it appeared now that pragmatism had won out over idealism in the war for her agreement. And so, Reaching down toward the lid and slowly opening it with my companions watching as though it were some treasure, I grabbed my prototype by its muzzle and stock and raised it above my head with a referential tune which visibly confused the both of them. Da na na na. Then, lowering the weapon for their viewing pleasure, I proudly began to list its specs. I based it on an old Earth model of airsoft gun, but I went ahead and doubled the power to give it more of a punch. I also tossed in some recoil suppressant systems to help soldiers fire it easier. Exceptional, Chot began, gently lifting the weapon from my arms and analyzing its myriad features with the claws of a careful admirer. What's the ammunition capacity? I had to modify the projectile's size and shape a bit for more stopping power, so it's lower than the original. I admitted with a sigh. However, making note of the disappointment upon Vavi's face, I elected to continue. It'll hold a good 50 rounds. I shrugged, forging a nonchalant facade in response to their stunned expressions. I don't know what to say, Chot began, clicking to himself in what translated as a light chuckle. Human, without your knowledge to aid us in this war, all would surely be lost. This model, of course, was only the beginning. My estimates of recoil on human weapons had actually confirmed my hypothesis that, given proper recoil suppression, even certain human weapons of war could be wielded by the Kafel. My reason for selecting such a weak device to base this design off of had ultimately boiled down to an oxymoronic mixture of caution and curiosity. Firstly, I determined that should Providence obtain this model, I would be able to provide my Zintrillian friends even better technologies to counter them. My second reason was, admittedly, somewhat less noble. Part of me simply wanted to see what this would do to one of those gelatinous dummies. Think you can bring that to the weapons lab? I asked Chot, earning from my translator friend an honored expression of agreement upon the assignment of such a task. There's something I still must get done in here, and I'd like Vavi to be with me for it. Confused by my cryptic request, the female Kafel I'd come to know well regarded my expression with newfound scrutiny. Not necessarily suspicion, mind you. By this point, the entire base seemed unanimously trusting of my benevolent intent, 
and none of them held more such absolute faith in me than Vavi. Following Chot's hasty exit of the hangar bay, I quickly approached my ship's computer and began sifting through its myriad functions in search of the broadcasting application. What are you looking for? inquired Vavi, nestling herself gently against my back so as to peer over my shoulder at the display screen. And more importantly, what are you going to do with it? Something I probably should have done weeks ago. I sighed, pulling up the app and carefully analyzing my features in its camera. I had to make sure that my willingness in Zintral's project was unambiguous, and looking too frazzled or messy may send the wrong message. Think you can step out for just a second? I requested gently, grateful for Vavi's immediate compliance as she stepped down the stairs of my ship's kafel added ramp and lingered outside to await further instruction. Smoothing back my hair one last time, I anxiously hovered my finger the open channel button and, taking in a deep breath of preparation, pressed down upon it. Instantly, a small red dot appeared at the top left side of my screen, indicating that from this moment on until I closed the recording, every word I spoke would in just over a century be broadcast on every Earth news station as the biggest story of the decade, at least. Hello, I began, stealing myself for the speech to come. My name is Andrew Malix, pilot of the 2196 UNS Destiny. Just under two centuries ago, my ship was lost in space on its way to the Trappist system. My guess is that I've long since been pronounced dead. However, as you can see, that is not the case. I am very much alive as of sending this message, though I doubt I will be by the time you receive it. A few weeks ago, my transport crash-landed on a terrestrial planet. The coordinates are attached here. The planet is beneath a K-class star and has approximately 0.3 Gs of gravity. The natives refer to this planet as Arkisa. And yes, I did in fact just say natives, Vavi. Immediately answering my call, the Kafel woman quickly brought herself back on board and looked to me as though awaiting instructions from a superior. Could you please come here and introduce yourself to the people of Earth? Surprise rocketed through Vavi's features like lightning upon the realization of what I was doing, causing her feathers to stand on end as she stepped forth and stammered out a reply in more broken than usual English. Hello. Name is Vavi, scientist for Nation Zintril. Andrew Shipland here and taken to military base. We are now there. Learning much from him? Picking up where Vavi left off, I continued. Vavi is a kafel. They are a species somewhat reminiscent of birds or reptiles, but with certain obvious mammalian traits. They are currently in their early machine age, with technology mostly between that of our first and second world wars. I appear to have landed in a place they call Zintral, a direct democracy with an elected head of state and no local offices. They are currently at war with a faction of genocidal theocrats known as Providence. As such, I have decided to assist them in attaining victory. So far, I have begun equipping them with older human models for weapons and vehicles. I am aware that this sharing of technology may ruffle a few feathers back on Earth, but unfortunately, the distance between us makes asking for forgiveness my only real option, given that permission would take centuries. I could practically hear the seething officials back home. Such an action as my own would surely be hotly debated in future history books as either great heroism or terrible stupidity. Some leaders would hopefully understand my overall reasoning behind this decision, but the majority, I imagined, would be wanting my proverbial head on a pike and my ass on a plate. I always did think the fictional prime directive was obtuse anyway, virtue signaling at its finest, saying how great you are for not interfering while allowing lesser advanced peoples to suffer without reason beneath your high horse. I was at the very least hopeful that the public sphere would understand my reasoning. Regardless, I continued, my head held high with a dignified air. I hope that once you've received this message, the will and means to befriend these wonderful people will be available. By the time you reach them, I will be dead. It's no use pretending otherwise. So please, treat these kafel with the respect they deserve. If not for their sake, then at least for mine. Thank you. With that, I clicked the button once more and its transmission ended. A light smack to the back of my head quickly returned my attention to Vavi, who seemingly remained undecided between being honored and furious with me. Why did not you tell me you'd be contacting Earth? 
because if I did, I began, tossing her a mischievous smirk as my eyes of their own free will scanned over her flustered features. You might not have come back in. But why me? She continued, awkwardly smoothing her arm feathers back into their usual position. Wouldn't Chot have made a better choice for this than me? He's Zintral's best diplomat, not me. Isn't it obvious? I asked, the conclusion one I'd already come to long before we stepped aboard my ship today. You're the optimal model. Woo, why? Vavi inquired further, the claws of her left hand tapping awkwardly against each other. I'm just smart, friendly, brave, and my best friend on this entire planet, I concluded for her, allowing my compliments to sink in before continuing in a similar vein. When I first woke from cryosleep, it was you who first spoke to me. You're so passionate about what you do that you willingly stood up to the fucking Velociraptor FBI just to continue working with me. Not to mention... I paused deliberately. Not to mention what? Vavi asked, taking the bait without a moment's hesitation. I paused, pondering anew if this was the right thing to say. Ultimately, I concluded that given how far I'd already gone, it couldn't possibly go too wrong. That fact is, I began, pausing once more for dramatic effect for taking a deep breath and finally spitting it out. Your feathers, your crest, your sparkling scales. I wanted to show my people the best example I could of your species, both physically and mentally, and you fit the bill. Shit. Sorry, that was awkward as hell. Don't be sorry, she chirped, her eyes visibly welling up with tears. Another curious case of convergent evolution. For an actual alien to view me as something special compared to every other kafel, that's the greatest compliment I've ever had. And I meant every word of it.